Hello, my name is Jamie Moore. I'm the Senior Director of Solution Architecture for Mobile Labs. Thank you for selecting to watch this video on the essentials of Gigafox and how we integrate with UFT. So this is a quick um, overview. Uh, Gigafox is our mobile device cloud. It comes in a hosted or an on-premise uh, solution. Doesn't matter to us. Um, the way you access it, so you come to this page, put in a username and password, and hit login. Then you come to the devices page. So you can see here we have um, a list of devices. Green is, means they're available. Red means that they are in use by another user. Uh, we are singularly focused on mobile testing. Uh, to do that, you need three things. You need devices, applications, and users. Uh, we support uh, mobile apps, uh, hybrid apps, native apps, and mobile web. doesn't matter to us. So. Um, We'll go through a quick overview of the user interface. Uh, we'll do our manual testing, and then we'll talk about how we integrate with UFT. So from here on the devices page, um, you see I have model and OS. If I want to see some different other values, like, for example, the vendor unique ID, the UDID uh, for iOS devices, I can do that. I can look at uh, notes uh, that have, are written for a device or a reservation for a device, see what the next reservation is. I can do that. These are all unique to uh, the user. Uh, that's not a universal setting. So we'll come back in a minute and actually connect to a device and do some manual testing. Um, let's talk about applications. These are applications that are uploaded to Gigafox that I can install onto a device. There's two ways to get an application up here. I can do it manually, hit this upload application button, navigate to it on my hard drive or network drive and upload it. I can also use our REST API to upload it to uh, Gigafox uh, via, if you're using uh, whatever your CI CD tool, it might be Jenkins or Bamboo, Team City, whatever. Uh, we integrate with all those, just use our REST API command to, to set that up here. Uh, comes up here, you can have the different values. I can install it onto a device from here. If I wanna do a blast install, I can certainly select all and install it across all my devices. I can install it via the REST API. I can also install it manually, and we'll see how that works in a second. The other main component is users. Uh, the one thing I wanna highlight here is every user has a role. And for us, it's very easy to create custom roles. If you want to add a role for the dev team, uh, or you can see here like test lead, you can highlight and, and assign specific capabilities within each. The other optional thing you can do is you can segment the devices by role. So if I want to have the dev team have their specific devices, I could do that. Uh, the QA could have theirs, or I could uh, sign that out by project team. Maybe project team A has their devices, project team B has theirs, etc. All right, that's kind of the um, the infrastructure. You can see, is is just again just a few tabs across the top. Let's put on our manual testing hat to connect to a device. You hit that green button that says connect. It's real tough. You can scroll the window. We have a snap to button here. It allows you to snap it this way. So then I can move this around. You see it goes red. has my name on it. So you always know who's using a device. And then for us uh, to swipe is hold down the left mouse button and then move it in the direction you want to go, either sideways, up and down, doesn't matter. And then once you've done that, um, let's just say... You know, what we want to do is test our device, right? Test our application. So you pull it up um, to enter text. You can use the keyboard of your computer. You can use actually the keyboard of the device. Again, just depends on what um, what your test case is, what your test step is. Let's say I want to use this username and password to sign in. I put that in, hit sign in, and I expect to come to this window. But what happens if I don't? Uh, well, we allow you to right down here. On these buttons, uh, I can take a screenshot of, of what I see and then put that into my, here's my actual result, and it doesn't match what I expected. So while we're talking about these buttons down here, let's just go ahead and highlight. These all are about the orientation. If I want to clockwise or counterclockwise, I can certainly do that. Uh, this will allows me to pick a specific orientation to do that. All right, so this button here allows me to GPS spoof the, the the device, if I wanted to think it's somewhere else, I can easily set that up with the latitude and longitude. Um, we support up to four-finger gestures, all the standard four-finger gestures, but 
If you have a unique gesture that you've created for your application, you can create that here. The step to um, invoke that, that gesture, put it here and share it amongst your team. That allows us to do it there. This button is going to show us that we are getting the 30 frames per second. That is the fastest in the industry. It um, allows instantaneous uh, response from the device. It's so fast that you can watch a video um, or a television show, a movie on this device through this viewer without any choppiness or um, hesitation. So that's um, how we would work that. These buttons along the side over here, um, I know we're going to talk about UFT, but if those of you who have um, worked with Appium or seen Appium, we have an integrated Appium server with Gigafox. And with that, we have an object inspector that allows us to look at these different objects. Again, I don't have to um, install anything onto my computer to do this. It's all just a part of the viewer. It's all built in with the Gigafox. I can get the XPath, the, the name, the label, the type of object, etc. I can also, with those applications that I've uploaded, I can install it from here. So this would be an on-demand um, installation of an application, as an example. And then um, this process and sample. So with mobile testing, um, performance becomes a little bit more um, advanced than, than just your web testing. In web, you want to know how long did it take to get a, a search result, for example. We still want to know that in mobile, but you also want to know, for example, what is my application doing to the application to the to the memory of the device? What about the CPU? Because you have all these different hardware um, OS combinations out there. You need to know what your application is doing on the different combinations of um, of devices that are out there. Processes allow you to see which process is, is running um, on the device. So that's how you monitor the uh, response. So again. Um, this is how you access a device to do manual testing. I can access multiple devices uh, at the same time. This doesn't matter. They come up in the same window. OK, again, brief overview of manual testing. Uh, we would be more than happy to uh, set up a um, demonstration for you in your specific environment to go over uh, your specific requirements. But let's talk about how we work with UFT. Under this name here, we have um, something called Mobile Labs Trust. Now, Mobile Labs Trust is an add-in that we created that goes with UFT. So I have an um, instance of UFT here. And if I go to settings, just to highlight, that's Mobile Labs Trust, that's from us. You just install it, goes with uh, UFT. It allows UFT to see objects within the mobile application as a regular object. And so to do that, what you would do here, rather than just hitting the regular connect button, so I hit this connect with trust. Launch application with Mobile Labs Trust. So highlight that. That'll bring it up in the Mobile Labs device viewer. So this will with my scale connect. I have the option of scaling how big the uh, the window is. And then from here, UFT can recognize these objects. And again, the way we'll highlight that is we'll use the object spy. I'll go in and highlight this, this object here. And you see we recognize it as an edit box. The name is in our username, right? So same type of thing for, um, let's say the password. So that's how we could create that, uh, build your um, object repository. You see here, obviously I've got the uh, toolkit here. So if I wanted to open this resource and you know, just kind of go back the other way, right? So I have it in my, in my object repository, where is it in the application? Well, there it is. Same thing with here, if I want to highlight that. So again, once you do that, um, if you're if you're able to write tests in UFT, then you are ready to go for um, for mobile. I'm just going to kind of scroll down this one a little bit just to kind of highlight. So it's just, right, so you, it's the phone lookup. You see the test object, it's the mobile device phone lookup, edit box is username. I want to set the value to mobile labs. So just as a quick example on how it might work, hit the run button. And what this will do is it will actually pull up the device uh, in the viewer. It will start the application. It's just going to run through um, username, uh, password, hit sign in, basically just to kind of log out, just to, as an example um, of how that works. So this is um, just pretty straightforward for us. You um, 
integrate with UFT using Mobile Labs Trust. Again, that's um, again the essentials of GigaFox uh, with UFT. Uh, please feel free to contact us to get a more in-depth demonstration uh, where we can talk about your specific requirements, your specific environment, and how Mobile Labs uh, and GigaFox can assist you in your mobile apps or in your mobile application testing. Thanks so much for your time. Have a great day.